liar. It's true, I swear. Lying's the only thing I'm really good at. Huh. Hello, darling. You're fabulous. Thanks. See what I mean? Until recently, my life was just a series of little lies. But always in the back of my mind was the dream that one day I'd get a chance at the really big one. You know? The lie that changes everything. We've all heard about it happening, you know, but it's always to somebody else, you know, and it's usually in America. And then it happened to me. I couldn't believe it. It's a liar's dream come true. To be honest, I wasn't really prepared for it, despite all the practice and the hard work. I mean, I got into some serious trouble back there. No, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> OK. <clears throat> it all started about two weeks ago in a pub in Shepherd's Bush. I just popped in for a quick half on my way to... No, hang on. No, I have to go back a bit, to a little earlier. 9.30 a.m., right? I was still in bed. Uh, hello? <clears throat> no, of course not. I've been up for hours working. What do you mean, never slept? And what do you mean again? Listen. I... OK, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Hello? No, I was not going back to sleep. Look, I'm heading out of the door at the moment. <sighs> Hi, sorry I'm late. There's a bomb in the high street. Lewis! Oh, shit. <sighs> Lewis, my dear boy. We've been having complaints lately about some of your descriptions of the properties we have for sale. Apparently, you've been straying from the strictly factual. But I thought you said you wanted me to use my imagination. Oh, I do, I do, I do, but it's, uh, it's running away with you, Lewis. But, and look, I applaud your attempt to create a sense of history, but I don't think it's wise to describe a semi in Eastern as the... It's the one-time secret country rendezvous for Nell Gwynne's mother-in-law and her royal love. Yeah, but surely you don't want me to tell the truth. Now perish the thought, Liz, perish the thought, but... But a relationship with the truth, yes. even a distant one, it's just a wonderful asset. See, our job is to conjure up a picture in words. Imagine the property, sunset, the most perfect day of the year, seen through the rose-tinted glasses of a half-blind, complete moron. That's what we're after. Right, OK, I'll, I'll work on it. <sighs> oh, uh, yes, um, yes, this, this uh, exclusive listing came in. It's, uh, it's a flat. It's in, in Docklands. I, I don't know the owner. Um, this chap died in a boating accident a month ago. The, uh, the wife lives out in the country. She wants to unload the flat. This Furniture there, effects. Get down there, make an assessment, get on the market. I'll go straight down there. Trust me. Mm. Hello, Bob. Hi, Martin. How's the stock market? Oh, you know, one of those days, you win a million, you lose a million. Give me a pint. <laughs> pint to <of> what? <laughs> Martin? I'm so sorry. I thought you were somebody else. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Embarrassing. Look, look, how can I make it up to you? Can I buy you a drink or something? Or lunch? All right. In New York. Sorry? In New York. I'm booked on the Concord in 40 minutes. Uh, we'll be back by tonight, I promise. I've got to work this afternoon. Of course you have. Right. I'm really sorry. Maybe tomorrow. Great. How can I get a hold of you? Sir, following an afternoon in the bookies on the Uxbridge Road, I finally got around to checking out the flat that Leon had told me about. Excuse me, sir. 
Can I help you? I'm going up to number 84. Shouldn't do that, sir. The bloke who lives there's dead. Fell off a boat and drowned. Yeah, I know. We saw a lot of that in the army. What, drowning? Dying. Oh, right. You should have seen what it was like at Goose Green. I did. What unit? Techero Militar. What? I was with the Arges. Undercover. How do you think we were able to pinpoint the Belgrano? D yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, nowadays I'm an estate agent. You saved the country from being overrun with Argentinians, and this is how they reward you. Yep. Go on up, sir. Thanks. I could see that to describe this place, I wouldn't need to stray from the strictly factual. I mean, to say that it was a superbly luxurious split-level apartment with fixtures and fittings of the highest quality would, for once, actually be true. <laughs> I mean, it was spacious, exclusive, ready for immediate occupation. This was an estate agent's dream. Oh, yes. To the discerning eye, this was a property full of possibilities. Dear boy! Yes, tell me everything about it. Don't miss out a thing. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, Leon. I'll, I'll make it sound as good as I can, but I have to tell you, this really is a tough one. Oh. That bad, eh? Yeah, I mean, it's a white elephant. With the market in the city soon, we'll never sell it. I'm so sorry, Leon. Well, I'll call you later. Hi, can I speak to you? Jules, please. Thanks. Hi, it's me, John Wilde. I kissed you accidentally in the pub earlier on. Hi. No, no, the plane was cancelled. There was a hurricane over the Azores, so... I'm stuck in London. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering if, uh, seeing as I'm free tonight, if maybe you fancy doing something. A club? Sure. Yeah. What about the place? No, we'll get in easily. It's not a problem when you're me. Thanks. OK? Yeah. Here you are, madam. Thank you. Thank you. What? Right now, I'm the one who feels like an idiot. Today at the pub, I thought you were, you know, what, lying? <laughs> no, not exactly. More like exaggerating. <laughs> I mean, all that stuff about Concord. But now with all this, the way these people treat you, I don't even know what you do. Television. You work in TV? <sighs> well, it's more like people in TV work for me. A couple of years ago, I started dabbling in ITV shares, and now I find I own one of the major companies. <laughs> yeah. And how do you know which shares to buy? 
Just watch the programmes carefully. I mean, there were lots of hidden clues in there. See Coronation Street last night? I was out. Could have made a hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> God. What could be simpler? You get a huge stage, throw in some cheap scenery, a few rocks, a big black backdrop. Then you put your two actors in those silly suits with wires attached to their backs. Then you film the whole thing with a wobbly camera and you broadcast it to the whole world, which is precisely what they did. You have a better explanation? Yes, Miles. They built a huge rocket. They sent it into space. A little capsule popped off the top and landed. It wasn't faked by the CIA at all. Men really walked in the moon. And you think that's more believable? Thanks, sir. Okay. I mean, you don't really need more than one satellite in space. I just... Well, they wouldn't take the card. That is outrageous. I sent the check off at least five weeks ago. Your card is fine, Mr. Wilde. Oh. oh. Good. You look different, Mr. Wilde. How different? Very different. No, no, I mean better or worse. Well, better. Good. Good, because it's cost a fortune. Even your voice doesn't sound the same, Mr. Wilde. Yeah. Council speaking a foreign language all the time. I just got back in England this morning. Be anywhere interesting? Just jumping from country to country. Sounds like business is good. Well, keeping my head above water. <laughs> The reason we're asking these questions, sir, is that we heard the rumour Mr. Wilde had drowned. I know. I know. Listen, I was the one that started the rumour. Now, do me a favour and keep it quiet. I've got to stay dead for tax reasons. OK? Thanks. And thanks for the champagne. Now, if you'll excuse us. Thanks. Follow him. Yeah, I do, I do. It's just the job's what's a bit weird. I hate lifts. stuff, are you? No, I just want to make sure I'm not dreaming. Hit me. Hit me.
Get dressed. You'll be late for work. Oh, shit. Can I help you? I'm Mrs. John Wilde. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm from Holmes and Cooks. How do you do? Uh, we understood there was a certain urgency about this sale, so I've already got the builders and decorators and removers and people in, so it's probably not a very good time to come in. I just need to pick up some insurance papers. Well, I'll get them for you. Thank you. They're in the desk. Right. I'm not sure I really want to come in anyway. There's too many memories. Of course. You suffered a terrible loss. I'm deeply sorry. I'm just being silly. There's nothing in here I can't face. <laughs> this was... John's idea of a pied-à-terre in town. I didn't come here very often. I always hated the way he'd done it. Why don't I make you a cup of tea? Oh. Oh, Mrs. Wilde, this is Jules. She's one of the people I was telling you about. Uh, hello. You told her. I'm sorry I interrupted. Heavens, look at the time. You better get going. What's going on? Who is she? Business associate. You said Mrs. Wilde. That makes her your wife. My ex-wife. Yeah. Ex-wife. We were divorced two years ago in Haiti. And that was the worst day of my life. I loved her. But I don't think she ever really loved me. Anyway, we still have some mutual business interests, so we have to get together every couple of months and sign little bits of paper. And... So I'm sorry. It it's always gets kind of painful. But it'll be a lot easier after last night. Will I see you tonight? Of course. Oh, no, hang on. Damn, it's Tuesday. I've got a movie premiere. Oh, if I don't go, Sigourney will be furious. I'll tell you what. I'll cancel the American ambassador tomorrow. Okay. If you're free. Yeah. These are all I need. The insurance company is paying out the money today, and they need these release forms. So typical of John. I think he only took out the policy to prove his life was worth two million pounds. Oh, my God. That sounded terrible, didn't it? No, no, not at all. I'm really sorry. You're busy. No, please, please, Mrs. Wilde, don't get so upset. Please. Please. Hey. Why don't you come and sit down? I promised you a cup of tea. <laughs> Believe me, I know all about sadness and loss, and it's important to talk about these things. I wish I could feel sadness, but the truth is I just feel relief. You see, my husband and I were very different. I suppose we knew it from the very beginning, but over the years, he became cruel spiteful, vindictive. I must have thought about leaving him a thousand times, but in the end, we just decided to lead separate lives. I don't think I ever loved him. And now that makes me feel guilty. It's OK. It's OK. Weren't you at the club last night with John Wilde? Yeah. Is John in? Yeah, but he's with Mrs. Wilde. I think things are a little tense. Right. Thanks. I'll catch up with them later. Thank you. You said you knew about loss. Was it someone close to you? It's my twin brother. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's OK, it's OK. We were in Uganda. Um, our parents had left us some money to travel around the world, but we decided to spend it building a hospital in a little African village. It took about a year to build it. And the very day it was completed, the Civil War broke out. And the German doctor we'd employed just sort of picked up and left. Oh. No, 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 I don't blame him. But, I mean, we couldn't just abandon the place. We 
had no medical training, but in a year you pick up a lot. So for about three weeks we sort of muddled through. <laughs> and then we had a real emergency. Yeah. Little boy's appendix burst in the middle of the night. We had no choice. We had to operate there and then by torchlight. And it was during the operation that Idi Amin's troops attacked the village. My brother was shot. Twice. In the chest. I'm not sure I could have done anything for him, but he would not let me help him. Don't let the boy die, he said. Don't you let that little boy die. By the time I finished the operation, my brother was dead, and the hospital we'd built had been burnt to the ground. Oh, my God. That little boy grew up to be Uganda's Minister for Health. I think my brother wouldn't like that. <laughs> that is the most terrible, wonderful story I've ever heard. I've never told it to anyone before. There is something about the pain of loss that connects people at the deepest level. Does that sound silly? Not at all. <sighs> of course, the real tragedy in my family was my younger sister. Remember that bloke whose wife... <coughs> John Wayne Bobbitt. What was his claim to fame? Temporary lack of a penis. Yeah, he's making millions on American talk shows. Now, the astronauts, and in particular the ones who supposedly landed on the moon, whatever happened to them? I have no idea. Precisely. They vanished into obscurity. It makes no sense unless... Mr. McCrane. Yeah, thanks for getting back to us. Remember John Wilde? <laughs> yeah. The police never found the body, right? Well, we have. It's alive and well and walking around London. We spotted him in the club. Well, it wasn't that simple. He's had extensive plastic surgery. He's also been living out of the country. We reckon he faked his own death to avoid having to pay you back. Yeah, we wondered about that too. But his wife's picking up a very large insurance check. He's here because he doesn't trust her. He's flying back tomorrow. Uh, I don't know whether I'm crying about your sister and those nuns or about my husband. There. Thank you. Feeling better? <laughs> I'm glad I was finally able to do that. I feel I can put this terrible thing behind me at last. Thank you. Oh, there are so many ghosts here. Can we get out of this place? Sure, come on. Well, here we are. It's a bit small. <laughs> yeah, but the 600 pounds a week rent money I save by living here pays for two of my orphanages in Romania. <laughs> I don't really need any more than this.
I know what you're thinking, but this is all about money. Two million pounds worth, to be precise. No, but the truth is, I really liked her. She brought out the best in me. And by the morning, I started to believe I was in love. In fact, I was in serious trouble. It all started that same day, just after lunch. Sorry, I'm late, Diana. I just had another bloody heart attack. Oh, my God. I'll be OK. Hi. What's the matter? Oh, Lois, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm in terrible trouble. He's alive. Who? My husband. I don't understand. Two nights ago, he was seen at the place. No, no, that's a mistake. I mean, that must be a mistake. Apparently, he's had plastic surgery, but it's not fooling anyone. Why, who would he be trying to fool? Peter McCrane. Who? John borrowed close to three million pounds from him a week before he died. I heard all this from someone who works for Peter. Apparently, McCrane suspected that John had faked his own death to avoid paying back the money, and now he's certain. If he isn't dead, I won't get the two million pound life insurance policy and the rest of the money. Peter McCrane is going to hunt him down and torture it out of him. I finally had my own life back, and now this. How could he have done that to me? What am I going to do? No matter what happens, I won't let you down. We're in this together. And I think I know a way to make sure he's never seen again. My God, Lewis. You're not suggesting... Oh. Oh, maybe it is the only way. Oh, could we really go through with it? Are we brave enough? For what? Oh, Lewis, when shall we do it? Do what? Kill him. You're right. It's the only way. It's not even a crime. I mean, he's dead already. We have to get to him before Peter McCrane does. It has to be tonight. Oh, Lewis. Hold me. After this, we can be together forever. There didn't seem to be a problem. I was the one they thought was wild, and I wasn't going to kill myself, so... I thought I was safe. So, I agreed to meet her later that afternoon outside the apartment. But I didn't realise quite how much interest there was in the residence of the late Mr John Wilde. <laughs> She's leaving now, Mr. McCrae. I'm on my way. Keep following her. I'll give her the number of the estate agent. Hello. I'd like to make an appointment of you one of your properties. He knew some very unpleasant people. Right, listen, I've been thinking. This is something I should do alone. It's my problem, Lewis. I can't ask you to... If anything goes wrong, you're the one they're going to suspect, not me. You have to be able to prove that you were somewhere else. OK? Right. I'm going up to the apartment now to wait for him. When it's done, I'll give you a call. I've arranged for someone to dispose of the body. And then we'll have to leave the country for a couple of weeks. OK? You've thought of everything. <laughs> Believe me, Jeffrey, the Russians can build a proper car. So we know their space program didn't happen.
Hey. So, we'll go upstairs for an hour or so. Come back down. Tell her it's done. Pick up the two million pounds. Won't even be lying. <laughs> yeah. Mr. McCrane, it's Miles. We're outside Wild's building. This is a terrible line. I can't hear you! We just seen Wild go inside. Get us out of here. Hello? Call me back! Hello, Mr. McCrane. We're outside the building. Wild's just gone inside. Hello, Mr. McCrane. Hello? Hello? Hello, Mr. McCrane. I think it's going out of range. Right, so I'm alive and John Wilde goes back to being dead. Good. Louis, dear boy, we're looking for you everywhere. <clears throat> I had a phone call about the flat. Anyway, thank God I found you. I thought I'd have to show the place myself. <laughs> Uh, Lewis, uh, Lewis works with me. Knows everything there is to know about the place. How do you do? My name's Peter McCrane. Same feeling every night before a big performance. Absolutely convinced I was going to go out there and die. Stage fright. You pull through. Break a leg. <clears throat> well, as you can see, this is the main part of this highly desirable residence. Which, uh, um, as you can see, it's uh, uh, big. Um, I just have to pop upstairs for a moment to uh, sort a few things out. So I'll, uh, I'll let you get your own feel of, of the bigness. Uh, for a while. I was just checking that, uh, everything works okay, which, uh, which it seems to be doing. Uh, well, as you see, this is the master bedroom. Well, it looks like someone's still living here. No, no, that was me. Uh, <laughs> not living here, of course. I, uh, I just had a quick nap uh, the other day, and I found that the room was extremely conducive to sleep. It's uh, very good, very good. Um, in fact, uh, the perfect place to end a hard day killing people. <laughs> I mean, after a, a killing day at the office. Yeah. Well, stop shouting, for Christ's sake. Let's... Why don't we let... Just... Shall we? Hmm. What do you mean, already, in the building? What girl? John. I'll call you back. Are you looking for John Wilde? I found him. <laughs> so have I. OK, listen, listen, you've got this wrong. All right? I'm not the person you think I am. I'm an estate agent. Leon, tell him that I'm not John Wilde. He's not John Wilde. Then again... If you're an estate agent, what are you doing with a gun? I'm protecting myself. Th there have been a lot of complaints and... Now, listen, this is ridiculous. The truth is, I pretended to be John Wilde for one night. Why? I didn't think it would do any harm, you know. I mean, he's dead. It's... I just wanted to get into bed with Jules. I lied. I'm a liar. You bastard. Just keep out of this. Okay, listen. I can prove that I'm not John Wilde. Give me your phone. Who do you want to call? 
Someone who can identify him. Who? His wife. Ex-wife. Wife! You bastard. Yes, me. I think you should get up here straight away. If you admit that you're a liar, why should we believe you when you say you were lying? You knew Wilde. Surely you can tell I'm not him. I'll admit there's no resemblance whatsoever. What? I know. Yeah, get up here right away. Now, where were we? Oh, thank God. Tell him who I am. You bastard. You come back to life just to go out with this slut. Who are you calling a slut? What are you doing? Wait a second. Are you saying this is your husband? Of course it is. No amount of plastic surgery is going to fool me. And now I'm going to kill him all over again. Kill him and I'll kill you. Whose side are you on? Yours. I need your lives and get my money. At her! Jeff. What are you doing? I'm with her. She offered me a better deal. And besides, I've just worked out that if we all shoot at the same time, I'm the only one who survives. Now we're back to square one. If anyone shoots, we all die. I thought there was something special between us. There is! What does it matter what, what I'm called or what I do? My name is Louis Fox and I am an estate agent. Isn't there any more of your lies? I'll give you a lift. Okay. Okay. Think about this. If I go into all the trouble of faking my own death and having extensive plastic surgery so that no one will recognize me, what am I doing using my real name? Your wife was picking up the insurance money. You're here to keep an eye on her. That doesn't explain why I was in the club. Like you said. You wanted to impress your new girlfriend. Yeah, but to believe that I'm wild rather than someone pretending to be him, you'd have to be hopelessly paranoid. Who says I'm paranoid? Very stupid, Miles. If anyone's able to shoot without being killed, they're gonna do it, aren't they? It's a theory of mutually assured destruction, Miles. That's what started the nuclear arms race. Okay. Okay. You want to know the truth? I am John Wilde. McCray, you can have the money. As long as you stop her from killing me. Darling, you can have the life insurance. She can stay alive long enough to collect it. Okay? Okay. I'll leave you to work it out. Put your gun down, Miles. You'll be able to shoot me. We're on the same side, you buck. Oh, yeah.
Hi. Hi. I'm John Wilde. You're Lewis Fox. You're alive. Very much so. Though I was dead until you brought me back to life. I thought I'd committed the perfect crime till you turned up. How do you know my name? My wife and I were on to you from the very beginning. Why didn't she just kill me then? She had to show you to Peter first. He had to believe you were me. Now, when you die, he'll be doubly convinced that John Wilde is no more. The way I see it, if you die twice, you're pretty well guaranteed to stay dead. He's gonna shoot me. Help! I hate guns. You let me down, Chef. <coughs> Car. Hello? Emergency, sir. We need an ambulance. Parkway buildings. Car accident. Well, you can't miss her. Oh, ah! You're not going to get away with this, you know. I'll be identified. After a couple of days underwater, you won't be looking your best, I'm afraid. Of course, we'll have to pull out all of your teeth and snip off your fingertips before we kill you. You'll also be found with that. It contains a full range of identity papers. Nobody is going to believe you weren't me. I hope Jeff makes it. All heart and no mind, are you, Miles? I like that. Get Jeff back on the team. Here he covers. He will, Mr. McCray. He's on Boomba. Just following Miles, this road goes nowhere. Well, you've got it all covered, haven't you? You can answer to every question. No loose ends. <laughs> what about her? Huh? She could sell you out at any time, which means she's got a hold over you for the rest of your life. You can't have that, can you? Huh? So you're gonna kill her just after you killed me. And they'll find Mr. and Mrs. Wilde dead together. That's enough! <laughs> Time, aren't I? Go on, prove that I'm wrong. Tell her you trust her. Now we've got them. Tell her you believe every word she says. I said that's enough. Go on, tell her you're both going to live together happily ever after. serious trouble back there. I didn't want to interrupt, I just wanted to make sure that you knew I wasn't lying about that. We have entrusted Lewis to God's merciful keeping. 
We now commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, he's the most honest person I've ever known. I had to identify the body, no? It's horrible. Poor Lewis. I knew these idiots had got it wrong the minute I saw him. Wilde died months ago. Well, I was so pissed off at losing that money, I was prepared to believe any old tosh about him still being alive. Of course they were convincing. They gave those guys so many drugs, they really believed they were on the moon. I love funerals. You're probably all confused now. Because if I'm dead, how could I be here talking to you? Well, the truth is I missed out an important part of the story. Just after the car crash. to kill me in the end. But I knew that all along. My problem was, the rest of the money is in his name. I couldn't do anything to him until I'd found a new Mr. Wilde. <laughs> so this was it, the big one. The beginning of a whole new life. And she'd planned it all along. <laughs> As you probably guessed, Leon was in on it. I called him from the airport and made a deal. It was his idea to say that the body in the car was mine, so that way there'd be no loose ends. <laughs> I was touched by that. He really should have stayed on the stage. So here I am, deliriously happy. Hello. Hmm. Where have you been? Oh, just, you know, shopping. Yeah? What have you been up to? This and that. Hmm. What are you telling them? Our story. The whole thing. Think they'll believe it? Well, it's the truth. Of course it is. <laughs> 